Hello fifth graders, this is Mrs. Lemoyne again and today we're going to be doing unit 6, lesson 19, compare to 1. We're going to continue to explain what happens when we multiply a fraction by a fraction greater than 1 and less than or equal to 1. Here's our warm-up. What do we know about 15 fourteenths times 23 over 30? Well, the first thing that I know is that if I multiplied these two fractions together, that it would be really hard because 15 and 23, I would have to multiply those two two-digit numbers, and then 14 times 30, I would have to multiply those two two-digit numbers. And so it would be a lot of work. I also know that this number is greater than 1, right? This is going to be equal to 14 over 14 is 1, and I'll have 1 left over. So the answer to this is going to be greater than 23 over 30. I can tell that because this fraction is greater than 1. So I already know that the answer would be something bigger than 1, or bigger than 23 over 30. Okay? It's just a little bit bigger, though, right? A little bit, 1 14th bigger a little bit bigger. Is the answer going to be less than, equal to, or greater than 23 over 30? And we decided that it was going to be greater than, and that's because it was greater than 1. We were multiplying it by something greater than 1. All right, here's our first activity. We're going to match the expressions and the number lines and this addition and multiplication value as well. Okay. Go. So this is two fifths times four thirds. Two fifths times four thirds. Well, I know that that's going to go with number line C because that's the only thing that has four thirds in it, right? And this looks like if I separated this into fifths, this looks like it would be two fifths times four thirds. Two fifths of four thirds. So I'm going to say this is going to match with C. Over here, I think that it's going to match with this expression because, again, it's the only one that has anything minus uh, times four-thirds. Mm -hmm. So this is going to match with this equation here. Okay, I'm going to get a different color out. I'm just using the process of elimination there, right? I'm not doing any math. This one is three-fourths times five-halves. Well, these two number lines both have five-halves in it, but I notice that this number is less than one, so my answer is going to be less than 5 halves, isn't it? So I think that this is going to belong to A, this number line, because this is less than 5 halves, so my answer is going to be less than 5 halves. Now, which one of these is going to be representing something that is less than 5 halves? Well, when I look at this number here, this is going to be 1 and 1 third, or we could say 4 thirds. And this is going to be, because I can say this is 3 over 3, right, and add it to this 1 over third and get 4 thirds. Over here, if I say this is 4 over 4, and remember I'm choosing a common denominator, I can choose any one that I wanted, and I subtract 1 third, I'm going to get, I'm sorry, 1 fourth, I'm going to get 3 fourths. So I believe that A is going to belong to this one because that's four third, four, uh, 3 fourths. And then, of course, process of elimination, that's going to belong here. And then I know that this is greater than 1, so my answer is going to be greater than 1, so that has to belong to B. It says choose one of the expressions from each set and explain whether the value is greater than, less than, the second factor. Well, again, we already decided that, right? Excuse me. Because I know that this is less than 1, this is going to be, the answer is going to be less than 5 halves. So that's how I chose A. This is greater than 1, so that's how I chose B. It's going to be greater than 5 halves. This one is less than 1, so it's going to be less than 4 thirds, right? I did not have to solve any of those. And when I thought about these expressions over here, um, I'm not solving them, but I'm thinking of that 1 as a fraction. So I'm thinking of this as 3 over 3 plus 1 over 3. That's going to be 4 thirds times 5 halves. I'm thinking of this as 5 over 5 
minus 3 over 5, so that's going to be 2 fifths times 4 thirds. And then I'm going to think of this one as 4 over 4 minus 1 fourth, which is going to be 3 fourths times 5 halves. Okay, I hope that makes that clear. Okay, how did you match the expressions in the underlines? Well, again, um, I saw, I kind of looked at the numbers and saw which ones were greater than or less than one, right? How did you find the matching number line for three fourths times five halves? I looked for an expression with five halves and then only one of them had one other fa another factor with a value of three fourths. How did you find the matching expression? That's the matching expression. The number line, I saw that two of the number lines have five halves on them and looked for the number line that showed three fourths of five halves. I knew which one it was because three fourths of five halves is less than five halves. How did you know whether the value of three fourths times five halves was greater than or less than five halves? Well, I knew that because three fourths is less than one. So less than one times five halves is going to be less than five halves. All right, so here is the part that is super um, confusing for some students. And so in my classes, we skip number one. We skip number one. But if you want to um, complete that challenge, because it is a challenge, then you can try to do number one with your classmates or with your teacher. But our classes, we found that super challenging. So I will give you the answers. Four sevenths minus two fifths times four sevenths. And for B, it was four sevenths plus one fifth times four sevenths. And for C, it was four sevenths minus three eighths times four sevenths. And then for D, it was four sevenths plus one eighth times four sevenths. Okay. This part is a little bit um, less tricky. So we do do this part together in class. Um, again, one minus two fifths. I can make this one a five over five and subtract five over five minus two over five and that's gonna be three fifths. Three fifths is less than one. So this is going to be less than four sevenths. For this, it's greater than one. So it's going to be greater than four sevenths. Again, I can say this is 8 over 8. 8 over 8 minus 3 eighths is going to be 5 eighths. 5 eighths is less than 1, so this is going to be less than 4 sevenths. This is 1 and 1 eighth, or you could say 9 eighths. All right, if I made this 8 over 8 and add it together, same thing over here, 5 over 5, that would be 6 fifths, or 1 and 1 fifth. But all I need to know is that it's greater than 1, so that means it's going to be greater. So describe the value of the product when 4 sevenths is multiplied by a fraction greater than 1. It means the product is going to be less than 4 sevenths. Describe the value of the product when 4 sevenths is multiplied by a fraction less than 1. Oh, sorry, I wrote that wrong, didn't I? I read that wrong. This is going to be greater than, greater than. This is going to be less than. There we go. So I read that wrong. Very good. All right. Moving on. Let's share how we rewrote the expressions as a sum or difference in two products. Again, you can do that with your class. How can we see the value of the expression is less than four sevenths? So I could, I could actually do the math, right? Again, if I change this to fit five over five, this is going to be 5 minus 2 is 3 fifths. So this whole thing equals 3 fifths. 3 fifths of 7 is going to be less than 4 sevenths. 
So I know it's going to be less than four sevenths because this is less than one. This is less than one. Even if I multiply this out, it's going to be less than four sevenths. This is less than one. How does the, this reasoning also work for this problem? So yes, it's again four sevenths minus some other number, right? Will this reasoning work whenever you multiply a number less than one by four sevenths? Yes, I'll always get four sevenths minus the amount, so that's less than four sevenths. Today we compared the value of a product of fractions to the value of one of the factors without calculating the fraction. What are some ways you can compare the value of the product with 15 over 13? Again, I know that this is less than one, so I can calculate the value, but the numbers are complicated. I can make the number line, and I can see that it's to the left of 15 thirteenths. I can rewrite 7 ninths as 1 minus 2 ninths and see that it is less than. Okay. What are some ways you can compare the value with the product of 7 ninths? I can calculate the value. I can make a number line, and I can see that it's to the right of 7 ninths. I can rewrite 15 thirteenths as 1 plus 2 thirteenths, and I see that it is more. All right. So again, 1 minus 1633, right, so that we can say this is going to be less than, right, because it's going to be 33 over 33 minus 16 over 33. And that's going to be, this answer is going to be less than 1, so I know that this is going to be less than 11 fourteenths. So again, this number is greater than 1. I could show that on a number line if I wanted to, or I could show it as a, a mixed number, right? It's going to be 1 and, let's see, 49 minus 33, 16, 33. So that's the same, but all I have to see is this is an improper fraction. It's going to be greater than 1, so the answer is going to be greater than 11 fourteenths. All right, I know I skipped a part and went fast over a section, but um, I hope that you understood all of the principles about comparing without multiplying or dividing. We can see if it's going to be bigger or less than the product. So that's it for unit six. I will see you again for unit seven, which is one of my favorite units. Thank you, boys and girls, for watching, and I hope that you like and subscribe.